So today what we're going to do is uh, prune these tomato plants. They're getting all nice and healthy. And uh, let's see, I'm going to start on this guy because... I want to ask a question first. Uh, do you... This, do you know which ones were started by seed or whether they were uh, clones? All of these were started by seed. Our clones are right back there. You want me to get one? Well, we can we can check the clone out later unless you... Uh, I'll, go, I'll go get it now okay. while we're talking right. about it. So, yeah, these are the clones and they are nice and healthy. Isn't that amazing? Yep. You can just... It just amazes me still. You just <laughs> cut it off and stick it. Yeah. And, it and every every cutting that we take today, if we wanted to make more clones, we could. I mean, it's just endless. But I've got. I just counted them this morning. I have 76. 76. Plants. Wow. And that's after the spider mite problem. We lost a lot of them, and then we lost a lot with the blight that we had a couple of weeks ago and uh yeah we still have 76. <laughs> that's a lot of tomatoes okay. so the reason that we're going to be pruning is because if we don't the plant will get really 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 big and bushy but it'll be mainly all leaves and we won't get as much fruit so what we want to do is we want to take off the plants that are just going to be, they're called suckers because they're, they're sucking energy from the plant or from the fruit, I should say. Um, so if you don't prune, you're going to get a big, beautiful plant, but you're not going to get as many tomatoes and they're not going to be as large. And the other reason to prune so that's, is, what, that's what I've been doing wrong in my garden every year. <laughs> a lot of people do. <laughs> they just... <laughs> so okay. this one is a good example of another reason why we prune. Is these these leaves are laying in the in the wet dirt all the time, and that's going to cause disease. That's going to cause some kind of a fungus, or because your leaves can't stay wet all the time, or they're gonna they're gonna get some kind of a, excuse me, fungus. So all of these bottom leaves, I'm going to cut off. Anything that's hanging down into the dirt. You're cutting them off pretty close too, to the. Yeah, pretty close to the stem. Stem. And this one needs to be. Uh, it needs a stake in it. So this plant, see how he's just wanting to fall over? If we don't stake him, he's just going to end up uh, cracking in the wind or he's going to end up rotting on the ground. So tomato plants have to be staked. Most people use a cage. I'm using this uh, dowel as an example. But in a pot, I think a dowel is fine. I don't think you need a... Don't really necessarily have to have a cage. Well, that's a handy little thing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then we're just going to... Just little wire ties. Yeah, just little wire ties. And we don't want these to be tight because that plant is going to grow a really big, nice stem. And we don't want to choke it, but we want to support it. So you kind of make it a little bit loose. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one too. And then one more up here on the top. And as they grow, you always have to stake them more.
I hear the birds chirping. Yeah. I love spring. Spring is here. Yes. Okay, so now that one's happy being staked up. And now we're going to look for runners or suckers. And I'm going to take this one here. A lot of it is just common sense. Um, but there is a, you can see this little growth right here. This is a very small example of a sucker. In the Y of the plant there, you see a little thing starting. That's actually like a new little plant that's going to grow. Oh. But that's where we want to cut those off as they get bigger because we don't want the energy of the plant going to those. How about that little one right here? That's exactly what we're looking for. And take those off and just chop them off while they're little. Mainly the ones that are coming off the main stalk or not not these here. See actually that's... this one right here is actually a sucker. Because it's in the Y. Yeah. And it's already grown and matured. You can decide, well, do I want to leave that or keep it? I'm going to keep that because it's nice and healthy. Sure. It's already got blossoms on it. Show the camera that there. What you're talking about, which one was the sucker again? This one right here would be considered the sucker. That, that big one right there. And it's got, that's a nice healthy, so, so that one I'm going to leave. But I'm going to take this that's coming off of that. It's just, you know, the common sense part of it is anything, the ones that look the healthiest, you want to keep those. I don't think there's any hard, fast rules. Um, but little ones like this that are just starting, we, we just simply don't need them. And this guy... Well, by cutting those off, that might help this one strengthen up quicker, huh? you think? Yeah, this guy's a little weak. Yeah. And... Wait and see. Yeah, we'll wait and see, because we might end up cutting that whole thing off if it doesn't start doing a little bit better. Yeah. And, of course, anything that looks sickly, we want to cut off immediately. As soon as you see anything that looks sick, just cut it off. That's one thing I've learned in this greenhouse um, is that you can get diseases so fast and it spreads so fast because we have so many plants that when you see a problem, <laughs> get rid of it. Get rid of it. Like now. <laughs> okay, this is interesting to me because this is showing so well. You see that little yellow flower there? Uh-huh. And then that one up there. Are these going to be yellow flowers too? Uh, the... Yeah. Yeah. Those now are... you said there's male and female on the same plant, right? Or, or, or no? <laughs> I'm still confused. <laughs> so, well, when you pollinate these in, a, in the greenhouse, do you have to? Do, do we have to do that? Yeah, and that's something that I'm going to be doing. To I've been doing as I see the flowers. Uh -huh. Is it? They say that uh, with the tomato plant, this is not true with all plants, but for tomato plants, that you can tap the stem a few times. And that helps knock the pollen out of there. And even sometimes uh, the fans that I have on and the breeze coming through. So that's actually enough just to get that, just to hit them like that or something. That's what, so that's should... what I've read. and I'm, I should bring my guitar amp in here, the big one, and boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's shake them up. That'd do it. Shake yeah. the pollen out of there. Now this this guy's got a lot of... Let's move this out of the way. A lot of them down here that just need to be trimmed off. I've got 76 of these to do today, so it's going to take me a while. <laughs> but 
all of this just uh, is definitely a waste. And everybody always asks me, how, how do you make your tomato plants or make your tomatoes so nice and big? And because my crops are always really, really good. And, and the, the key is keeping them trimmed up. I believe that is the biggest key. Oh, one thing not to do, um, learned this a few years ago. My sister and I were doing some trimming and we over trimmed. We took a lot of the stuff off of the top and uh, this, the fruit wasn't getting shaded enough and the sun just scorched the tomatoes. Just fried them. Just fried them. I mean, yeah. so for outside plants, of course in here it might be irrelevant, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to try it. <laughs> So just a little word of warning there. So that's basically all we do to these now and, and then as they grow like oh once a week or once every two weeks you want to do the same thing and keep up on them. So I'm done with that guy. Yeah, he looks nice. Yeah, nice and healthy. Give him a couple taps. Pollinate the plants. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like that would have worked to just knock them, yeah. you know. But uh, that's well, what I, I, I heard. I heard of internet. somebody take electric toothbrush, the one that vibrates, real, doing something with that. I don't know. They, I read that they do that on the, um, was it cucumber or was it squash? where you actually do have to take a toothbrush or something and get it out of the male flower and put it into the female flower yeah, yeah, by so. hand. So I've got some squash over there. That'll be in next video. So We're going to figure out how to pollinate. <laughs> I wonder if they sell a book on that because most people wouldn't know how they could pollinate it. Oh, I'm Just sure there, I'm sure there is. I've been getting my information off of the internet, but I'll bet there is a book out there. I'm surprised I don't have one. I've got a gardening book on how to do everything else. <laughs> well, the other thing I wanted to do is, uh, oh, by the way, if, if you wanted to, and we had a video about this on propagating, um, but if you wanted to make clones now, very, very easy to just take these stick them in dirt, pack the dirt tight around, and you will have new new healthy plants. So I kind of hate to throw all this stuff away, but if I planted all of them, we'd have thousands by the end of the season. <laughs> so this is basil, and uh, nice healthy basil plant. I love the smell of these. And what I'm doing now is we're ready to um, harvest this to dry the basil and then we can use it as spices now you can you can Damn, they do smell like it's standing here Ooh. rub it between your fingers and then smell it wow basil is wonderful and what's interesting about basil too is that bugs don't like it so it's good to have in your greenhouse or in your garden but when you're sitting out on your patio and you got all the flies and wasps and stuff, um, I read that if you take out four or five basil plants and put them around your uh, patio, that it'll keep the bugs away because they can't stand the strong odor. Well, I, I would say it's not a good smell. I do like it. Oh, I love it. You, you don't do. like it? Well, but, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> probably get used to it after a while well I I started a whole bunch more um, basil plants after I read that because uh, I want to keep the bugs away from us when we're eating outside and stuff oh you're really gonna chop him in two yep yeah we're gonna take him down to about three inches or so just grab the whole thing chop it off and and take these leaves off on the bottom. 
Now you can just leave these growing in your kitchen and as you're cooking, just uh, snip them off and put them in your spaghetti and stuff. And, oh. uh, but what we're doing here is we're making dried basil, the kind you buy in the stores. Um, The only reason I'm taking these bottom leaves off is because we're going to tie up the stems. We're going to tie that up really tight with the handy dandy little... Yeah, it works. Where'd you get that? Got this at a greenhouse, but I think I saw it at Walmart too. Probably a lot more, a lot cheaper there, even though I hate to say that. Okay, there's no such thing as too tight on that, right? No, because um, what's going to happen is when this starts drying, these are going to these are going to get start getting smaller and smaller as they lose their water. So. Uh, we don't want all of it to fall out. So all this we're going to do now is we're going to hang that. I'm going to hang it in the basement. But hang it anywhere upside down and just wait for it to dry. Scare all the bugs away down there, too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's how you dry basil. And then once it's dried, oh, I missed that one. Well, I'll do another one. So once that's dry, then you just crumble it up and put it in a shaker, and you got fresh basil. It's pretty cool. I love the yeah. harvest. Yeah, I just usually use salt and pepper, so I, I'm not a cook either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lori does a lot of Italian, so I yeah, know she, I, I have she no idea what basil. I'm eating. <laughs> you just know it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So that's all I wanted to talk about on the basil. Okay, and are we going to go around? Yeah. We'll go around and show how the greenhouse is doing. It's really starting to prosper a lot. And uh, the one thing I've learned about the greenhouse, and we're learning all the time because this is new to us, and uh, but is to check the plants every single day for any kind of disease, bug, anything that looks funny because things do spread so fast and you have to nip it in the bud like this and we lost what a third of the greenhouse just a few weeks ago and uh, well you wouldn't know it I'm, it's growing yeah good right now and I we lost all of our uh, peas and our uh, beans and we lost that due to blight now blight from what I understand um, is when the uh, when the leaves get wet, if you don't have fans or some kind of good circulation going around to keep the leaves dry, um, in a greenhouse they don't have an opportunity to dry, so disease hits the plant and it's almost like it molds, it just molds the the stem in here. It's really weird stuff. Um, and I bought some uh, ortho, I think it was called Disease Be Gone sprayed it with that and it took care of it right away but because i didn't know what it was i didn't react on it for a couple of days and i tell you two days is too long to wait to take care of a problem <laughs> so that's one of the really important things that i've learned and also that if you don't have a absolute passion for gardening you probably won't like having a greenhouse because it's a lot of work <laughs> Well, I but, can see where there'd be a lot of money to be made here. We maybe we'll have an outlet for some of these plants. We're going to have to, but I, I could see where people would pay a lot of money for a, a tomato plant that's that big versus you know. Uh -huh. well, I know I would if I if you got the extra cash, you know. To, yeah, we just need to find where to an outlet where to sell them now, and yeah, we have uh, a. We love out in the middle of nowhere, so. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Okay. Hello. Hi. Welcome 
to Tomato City. <laughs> yeah, we have one heck of a crop, don't we? What I've been working on, uh, my husband and I came up with this uh, trellis idea because it was cheap. Because we, if we would have bought the baskets, it would have cost a fortune. So we got this uh, wire and drilled through here. It isn't the prettiest thing, but I tell you what, it serves the purpose, and it was super cheap to do. I like it. I wasn't here for that. Paul's inside working. He has a job to do. Yeah. But he's the one that put this together. Yes, he worked his bum off on this one. Did a good job. Anyway, these are looking pretty good. So, all of these are tomato plants. These are all um, jalapenos. And all of those are tomato back there, of course. And all of these. And we lost our entire crop, like I said earlier, to that blight problem we had. And I replanted right away, and these came up really fast. And when we planted our peas in uh, December, they came up really slow, if you remember right. So makes a big difference having the longer days now. And then these hanging pots that I've got, I'm making some, uh, the flowers will come out, you know, just big beautiful pots and I'm hoping to sell those. Very, very cheap to make if you do them by seed. And, oh, I wanted to point something out over here on the tomato beds. If you look in between, on the ground where it looks like like grass is growing. This little stuff. Those are carrots. I read that um, carrots love tomatoes. Actually, I bought a book called uh, Carrots Love Tomatoes, and it talks about companion planting. And they recommended just sprinkling seed. I just put it on here like I was feeding the chickens. And so we're going to have a nice crop of a lot of tomatoes or uh, carrots, and it takes no more space than what we already had. That's pretty cool. I've never heard of that. I hadn't either until I read that book on companion planting. So that's something new. I was going to ask you, did you replant beans there again? Everything in this bed is brand new. Are they beans? Now these are uh, these are peas in the front. Peas. And the beans are in the back. Beans have the the bigger leaves. Yeah, it was kind of sad because I had to cut down that entire thing, <laughs> but it happens, you know. The carrots back there are doing real well and. Uh, onions are starting to starting to come up, and the lettuce, of course. And I'm making uh, over here. I'm starting. This is all the sweet basil we were just talking about. So I'm going to try using that as insect repellent this year. And I've got some cucumber, squash, zucchini, cantaloupe started. And all of these over here are marigold. Marigold are, uh, every year I plant them in my garden because insects don't like the smell, just like the basil. It, they have a real small, strong smell. And uh, so it keeps the bugs away. I've always used them and I've always found that they work. So I'm gonna plant some in here and then some in our outside garden. But I used to buy those, so now it's nice to be able to bring them up by seed, and they just cost pennies instead of, otherwise I'd have to go spend $20 on marigolds. And what else do we have going on? I've got 
I've got some spearmint and regular mint starting and our lavender plants are doing really this is a lavender plant this one's doing really really well I've taken cuttings off of here and I've got some clones that are growing down there I forgot what this is let's I think this is sage I smell it yeah that's sage well, we have plenty of that out here in the fields I suppose it's the, the same, same kind. Isn't that the same sagebrush? <laughs> and that one is cat grass. It's called catnip. And I put that outside for the cats and they just munch on it. They just love it. I got watermelon plants over here and this is just a nice ground cover really pretty white flowers it gets really really thick and just having fun starting things and but it is starting to look like a jungle isn't it <laughs> it sure is <laughs> Imagine what it's going to look like a year from now.